Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, here in the middle of our day in New York City at 10th Cloud Expo. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, if you're following this big data power panel out there on the World Wide Web via Syscon TV. We've got to the middle of the day. We're not quite there yet, but it has been a long Cloud Expo, one of our longest ever. And look, they're still beaming. They're still full of energy. The audience is still substantial, and you're alive. So let's not waste the moment. Let's not let these 30 minutes go by without exploring the themes that we've come to know and love. Let's find out who's exploring them with us. Um, Perhaps you could introduce yourselves with a little bit of a big data twist, if please. So let's not just have the dry and tedious. Let's hear what your take is, Govin, yes. as well as the eucalyptus, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> we want to hear your take on big data as we launch into this panel. Certainly. So I am uh, Govind Rangasamy. Um, I run product management for Eucalyptus Systems. So if you look at big data, right? And the combination of big data and the private cloud, I think, is just getting started, if you think about it, right? The reason why I think this is getting started is because the data that is being gathered is all over the place. It's all in dispatch systems. And it's one of the reasons why it has become so difficult to analyze. The cloud provides that single point of entry where you can do the security aspects and analytical aspects on top of a single platform. I think that is very attractive. We'll uh, see. <laughs> Certainly, yeah. We'll see. <laughs> Take us away, so, uh, Kevin. I uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Kevin Brown. I'm CEO of CoRaid. Uh, we are an Ethernet SAN scale-out storage business, but we're really about you know taking that big data model that came out of the cloud of you know people like Amazon and Google, et cetera, of scale-out commodity hardware, you know, handling massive amounts of data, and really uh, turning that into a very automated, very high-performance system. Uh, and uh, I started back with big data about 1995. I was on the founding team of a company called Inktomy. We were building the oh, big, the big back-end infrastructure uh, for, you know, sort of for search, for content delivery. And so a lot of the principles that are now you know, sort of making into enterprises were what we had to do way back in building the web day because we didn't have any money. And we had to do massive amounts of, of information. And so now everyone, even if you do have money, has to learn from what you know, the, the big cloud guys do to really figure out how do you get your arms around 10 petabytes per administrator. Right. We'll circle back to your veteran experience, Kevin Christos, not such a veteran. Well, not exactly, but yeah. So um, Christos Trifonas, I'm actually a CTO and a founder of a company called Citas. Uh, we're actually now part of VMware, and we're doing um, cloud, um, actually cloud analytics as a service and also big data analytics. So anything related to online applications, right, all the Zingas, Facebook, and so on and so forth, analysis of massive amount of data, on the cloud, offer it as a service, and doing the full stack of analytics, right, from like your traditional dashboarding all the way to clustering and modeling and predictive uh, analytics. All very good, Max. Awesome. Uh, awesome, Max, says awesome. Max. Awesome. Um, uh, I'm Max Rigsby. I'm the chief marketing officer and head of product for Whiptail. Uh, with respect to big data, we're really on the velocity side of the story. Um, our products, which are 100% silicon storage arrays, or SSD, are really designed to help applications uh, operate at a much faster rate than they have previously done. And we allow you to consolidate um, high performance, high demand applications into a single platform. Um, from our perspective, and what we hear from a number of customers, is the challenges that they're facing, along with gathering all of this information, is, is, is the ability to ingest it very, very quickly and then turn it back out so they can use it for analytic platforms and other things. And that's really the fundamental service we provide. Awesome squared. Awesome. Very good. Kevin, let's circle back to you, if we may, because you're possibly the only one who can answer this with that incredible experience of yours. Big data's been around since the early days of computing. So let's be quite clear. Let's, so when the audience go home and say, why was this big data kept coming up at Cloud Expo? Let's, can we just nail that? Why is it so significant now, if it's been there all the time, why is big data so significant now? Well, it turns out big's getting bigger. And so if you, you know, today the storage industry is growing about 50% per year compounded in capacity. Right, that's an amazing explosion. But if you look at higher growth, you know, businesses, let's say they're doubling. So you go one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. So whatever worked at one, 
you might be able to stretch to four mm -hmm. or maybe eight, but Very when you good. get to 16, 32, 64, I just, you just can't do it the same way anymore. So what has always been true is that you've always been able to buy big boxes from the usual suspects and, and you could buy a bigger box, but at some point you can't fit it all into a big box. You need to figure out how do you do it across a lot of commodity boxes and, and get up on that, that commodity curve. And that's not something that your favorite vendor you've been working with has for you. They don't, they don't do that. You need to do something new. All right, so that's, that's the one takeaway. So geometric growth, one thing. Gavin, what, what, why now? Right, one is definitely the growth. The data is growing 12 to 18 times um, every year, right, if you think about it. And um, second is, is this a precision of the, uh, the, the data and, and the demand of the precision demanded on the data itself. If you think about it, there is raw data, and then aggregate data, then you do some analytics on top, then you come up with some kind of a decision. So companies see this gold mine of data being gathered, and they want information out of that. They want to make decisions out of that. Right? So that's actually driving the analytics piece on top. So when you say precision, you mean we've got, you know, we've got the really fine grain stuff. We've yeah, got I want to understand, like if Facebook, you know, I want to understand. What time of day someone ordered the pair of exactly. shoes in which no, state, you want to in which get to that level of information and the big data and then platforms built on top of big data really help us to get there. All right, so we've got geometric growth, we've got the precision of the data and the abundance within that precision. Christos, is there anything not yet covered? Yeah, I think at the end of the day, these applications that are generating this data, right? So we have to see why, so there's a couple of things here. Obviously, disk and the commoditization of storage. Uh, that is making any application developer, any application or any action enterprise to want to uh, kind of store and keep and maintain all the data in raw form for years, if possible, right? And because maybe they'll find a clever way to do analysis later on. So, so they don't know maybe right now. So, from the past that we're doing and just you know, do performing kind of aggregate analytics on top of the data, now they're going into, I'll just keep my uh, aggregates, but I'm just gonna keep also my raw because maybe today I'm gonna do this type of analysis, but maybe tomorrow I'm just gonna go back and, um, and I can go back and actually just do some more analytics. So the thing is, the reason why people don't even know what they're gonna be uh, looking for later on, they just maintain everything on disk, which is becoming very commoditized, very cheap. All right, so my take on that, so tell me if I'm putting words in your mouth, that sounds to me like, you know, roads make journeys. We've now got this incredible road, we can decide where to go, we don't have to decide today, but, exactly. but we can come and revisit it. Max, anything not yet covered, driver yeah, yeah, of big data? I, yeah, I think one of the fundamental drivers is, is really the growth of sort of mobile and handheld devices, which is really okay. changing the sort of the landscape in terms of how people can not only access, but when they access which really you know, it drives uh, a big part, not only of the velocity story, but it also drives a big uh, part of when people will access or make a request. And I think the combination of sort of the when and the immediacy, it really forces companies to have to not only provide services in a more timely manner, in a more ready manner, but since your customer may, may be in motion, you need to now do a different level of analysis more quickly lest you lose them. So, so I think the mobile component is, is huge. There are nearly a, a billion smartphones and about, about 6.1 you know, sort of uh, mobile subscriptions in the world. That's a lot of people walking around with access to, to the internet or access to very rich data. And content. Excellent, excellent. So we had geometric growth, we've got precision, we've got the idea we can do it now because we've got the roads to do it along, and then we've got mobile coming in as kind of factor X. So we have a technical audience, I know we have a mixed audience, but we also have a high degree of technical savvy. So let's just again spell <laughs> out what if somebody's only just coming to this. What impact then? does the arrival of big data have from, a, from an architectural point of view on storage, on networking? Can we take a round of that? Who wants to yeah. start? Kevin's gonna start. So us. I'll, I'll put, put this uh, sort of a concept out there. When you had a few boxes and you could have a few experts around them, that was pretty easy to think about. Now, you know, you're running business models that if the more data you can get your arms around, the more money you make, right? And so it's about how do you multiply and get leverage on every asset, whether it's a dollar, whether it's an administrator. So what we're seeing, I had dinner last night with uh, the chief architect of one of our customers, Shutterstock. They're here in New York City, they're going public. 
And uh, they are a very interesting customer. They have over a petabyte of our storage. And they program, they don't have administration, they have all programmers. It's web ops, dev ops kind of thing. They do 700 software releases a month a month onto that infrastructure, constantly tuning it. So if you have to wait around three weeks for some you know, old legacy process to go and turn a knob on something, you can't do that. You can't run your business around that tremendous growth and that tremendous flexibility that the new, the new age data models have. So as you start thinking about massive amounts of infrastructure and massive amounts of data for these, you just can't do it the old way. You have to think about programming it, orchestrating it, and have it be software defined. Right, so it's changing because it has to change, otherwise yeah, it's not, it's not it. going to work. Who's next on that one? Yeah, I, I just want to add on to that because I think from the administrative point of view, the, the tuning systems is something that no one really has much time for, uh, in particular in the universe of performance tuning. This becomes a very large challenge, moving data around so that you can find the right spindles or the right system because the application signature has actually changed. Um, and so, from, again, from our perspective and what we see from customers is that's a part of the business they also want out of, right? They just simply want to land applications, get the performance characteristics that they're looking for, and know that will be sustained over time, and it will also be sustained as the applications grow. You don't have time anymore to tune and move and all these various things. So I, I think this change, this big data change, both in terms of the scope, the size, and the velocity behind it, really starts to take performance tuning off the table. All righty. Now, slightly obvious question, but I want to hear what you actually say, because you guys are, are, are doing it. This, you know, marriage made in heaven, cloud, and big data, it's, I mean, what could be better, and we're going to go off into the sunset together. Can we assure the audience, is it absolutely hand on heart certain that you're not just saying big data is cool because you're all cloud providers, and you're just, you know, jumping on this big data bandwagon and you're going to figure out where it's going. Can you put your hand on your heart and say this is all about business value, only about business value? Go Certainly. Ahead. I mean, this is about business value because the location where you store the data, one. Second, the fast with which you can access the data is very important. I mean, releasing that many applications really, really quickly is it going to be uh, the throughput of the data getting accessed by the applications, right? That's important, because unless you have it in one place, it's going to be really hard to access the data online. I perfectly understand right. that. My thought is, it's awfully convenient, is it? I mean, I can only do it if I use you guys. I, I have awfully convenient. So, I have a perspective on this. So, uh, you know, the Fortune 1000, is no longer the data 1000, right? So there's some businesses that you know, keep rolling and they, they, they're doing things the way that they've always done them and for them, you know, they, they may have a different and a lower value for big data and that's an important thing to discover and do, you know, even if you could benefit it from it, do you have the right people in your organization that can really drive it, right? Okay. So th those are important qualification questions to say is, you know, is big data right for me, et cetera. Uh, what's interesting, though, is to watch smaller companies that are using it so aggressively and getting real big business advantages. So it comes down to, you know, are you find using that tool in the right way? And for the ones that are, the, 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 you know, the benefits are pretty dramatic. I mean, you see them really, you know, like in this case, you know, uh, with our customer we just said, they grew from 40 million to 200 million in revenue in, a, you know, just a couple years. And if they had not leveraged big data, if they had not leveraged a lot of very intelligent tweaking and, and analysis, they would have grown to 100, not 200. So they would have done fine, but they had the right people in the organization and they had a business model that could really benefit from optimization through data. So those are the kind of questions, you know, over and above the hype that each company has to ask themselves. So is it too early maybe to have, should we have BDOs, should we have big data offices? And, you know, in a public company, you, you have to prove that you're attending to, to the potential of that? I, to get I promoted mean, these days, I, it's probably not a bad idea to be conversant. And a lot of people, I think, are spinning projects up so they can check the box and say they're working on it. Right. Uh, and there, there's, some, there's some value to that. But, uh, you know, you have to understand what's good for your business. And if you're in a data-centric business and you're not thinking about that, that next-gen infrastructure, uh, you're in trouble. I like that. We'll so, return to uh, that, too. I would definitely second that. I think uh, from what my experience has been, uh, basically new, the data you see right now, the big data essentially, is different characteristics. It's, pay, it's mainly read-only data. It's massive amount of data created in a non-structured form. Um, it is read-only kind of format. You know, I just generated and I want to analyze it later on. 
And that means that the architecture around that data has to be totally different. You see the stack is really different. And because you really don't know how much growth you're going to have, take any company, like 10 people company, Instagram. You guys are familiar with Instagram, right? A billion dollar company just got acquired by Facebook. So essentially, um, at the end of the day, these are data driven companies. And they really don't know. They may have like 1 million uniques one day. They may have 20 million uniques the next day. So they have to get all this data in. So it's a very uh, compatible use case with the cloud. So big data has to be elastic too. So it is read-only, new architecture, but also has to be totally elastic. If you want to have elastic resources, it has to be virtualized, has to be cloud. There's no, you cannot just bring in boxes um, at, the spe uh, at the speed and rate that I'm going to be generating actually data. It's impossible. The other trick with Instagram is get Justin Bieber to tweet you. <laughs> That's true. I like that. So it's big, but the fact, but you don't know when you need it, so you need the spike ability. That well, you definitely need the spike. Alex, yeah. well, the elasticity, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Max? Yeah, well, I mean, I just don't know how a company today is really going to sort of manage its affairs without understanding both what it's doing internally and what may be happening externally. I think all of those data factors now have to come together. Um, I agree that the cloud plays a huge role in the elasticity of resources that you may need um, on demand to drive that. But I, I don't think, um, I, don't th I think the term big data feels like it's been hyped, but the reality is that if you go to talk to different companies in different market segments, it really does mean different things. Hospitals, it means one thing. In financial, it means something different. In retail, it means something else. Um, there has to be clarity around the sources that you're using, much of which is internal, and a lot of it is to the point, it's stuff you already have, right? It's transactions, it's web logs, it, it may be sensor data, right? The question becomes, how do you synthesize that information in a way that tells it's a story about what's happening sort of within and around your company so you can make course corrections and adjustments? I don't see how any company today, um, sort of with the moving landscape, I, I don't see how they don't participate in this. And at, and at the same time, not... <coughs> Uh, be caught off guard if, if, if they don't. Oh, it makes sense. Um, next one is a sort of terminological question, just because now we've got this far, we want to give as many takeaways as possible. So people have been hearing about big data at the conference, but they've been seeing on the slides fast data. So who wants to just quickly make sure I that everyone goes away? I love fast data. Right. Somebody make sure that everybody goes away knowing the difference. Oh, including me. Well, I don't know if there's... Um, I'm not sure I would say there's a difference. So why the two terms? I think it's just as if you sort of look at, at, at big data, there's a discussion around volume, variety, and velocity, right? These are characteristics. Fast data is a characteristic. Um, you know, the bottom line is if you want to do an, an analysis in real time, the data has to come nearly in real time, right? Um, other, otherwise, what good is it to you? So, you know, fast data is really a, that particular discussion. How do you move data, ingest it, and return it even faster than right. we do so, today. So there is a distinction. So if, if I there's a distinction as a layman. So big data is going to help in say uh, the medical science, medical research. It doesn't matter whether you do the amazing database of every cancer survivor in the planet on right. a weekend. That's one thing. But if you want to sell more Nike shoes while the World Cup is playing, you want it to be real. So I'm I'm thinking I can see a, a distinction. Well, Kevin. you know, another way to think about it is that you've got all of this data and you need to be able to both handle the scale, the capacity of it, and then for the bits that you need to really go and crunch, you need to then have the, the proper speed to be able to, to you know, ask right. questions so very kind quickly. Of grabbing a subset and then... Exactly. So it's a, it, the trick is how do you then have an infrastructure that can handle both? Right, so you're going to need so to have all the this. volume first, and then yeah. you need the velocity. Because you know it no, might be cold data, and then you need to ask it a question. And now it's hot data, and it needs to be fast. So I like that cold data and hot data too. So it's you know part of it is is thinking about your infrastructure in a way that's flexible enough that you can then put put the right tools you know to work to 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 handle those different needs for capacity for performance and to be able to wrap management around it so that instead of having a hundred people managing that you can manage it with ten or with five and really you know put the rest of the people in the organization to work creating value asking the questions with analytics for example does that resonate with you Gobin? does it does, does anyone does anyone at eucalyptus systems care whether the data coming it, through is fast, is actually, slow, hot. I mean, does it matter to you? It, it matters because the platform has to be able to satisfy the need. So one right. of our OEM partners, uh, they are in the security field, and they are working with government entities, right? Um, they say security data nowadays is a big data. It so happened that they are analyzing the big data, that security big data, in a much more real-time basis. 
So the platform, you know, they build the platform on top of Eucalyptus, which means the platform has to be able to satisfy that real-time analysis. You know, they are monitoring the bank transactions. Right? So it has to be really, really fast. So if there is a difference between that big data versus fast data, I think big data in terms of gathering that information in one place, accessing it, analyzing it, has to be fast. So if we combine that, I think you can make out some kind of a difference. All right. Well, just go on, Christos. Yeah, I think um, the, uh, this is something uh, actually the, from, the, from customers we talk to. It's kind of not necessarily. I, I believe real time will be there, so fast data will be there. The question is to how much, and I think it's very, very concentrated on particular verticals. Maybe fraud detection, maybe um, ad publishing, right? Ad placement, but it's very, very specific. I don't think real time is happening yet. Uh, from what we see, uh, obviously big data, you need to ingest everything, you need to be able to scale the infrastructure and so on and so forth, but to make a decision real time, uh, I'm not sure that it's happening yet. And it's not actually, it's not happening yet. Uh, everybody talking about analytics is always buts. And you can take any company that really are uh, metrics driven, data driven, from the best, uh, smallest company, the best company, biggest company, they still do bats analytics. They utilize their data in, on a daily or weekly basis. They never do it on a millisecond. All right. No, that's good. Well, let's get away then. So we're we just have a little velocity side. And let's go back to volume. Um, put up your hands if you were aware of the headline that came up about, I don't know, I want to say in the last month, cloud computing can cure cancer. Yeah? You remember that one? Sort of, that was a meme going around. Um, who knows? The only thing I have in common was Steve Jobs. Anyone know? Uh, we both had pancreatic cancer. He's dead, I'm alive. That's the difference. And you get quite interested in, in data sets and genomes and things. So if I understand this correctly, if, I, if I've understood it correctly, they say cloud computing could help cure cancer, but they really mean big data, right? They mean crunch, 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 take every individual's whatever it is, you know, slice me through, and then work out something unique to me. I, I got rid of it, by the way, so don't, don't panic. I'm not going to drop dead. Um, is that going to be the most incredible use case yet of first big data and then the cloud? Maybe cloud computing can cure cancer. Well, you know, it's nice when cloud computing can you know, let you have pictures or share things with friends. That, that's nice. But when it, you can you know, go be, fight cancer, that, that's a pretty good use that case, That would be right? an interesting thing. And you, know, you look at where, where, do we, you know, where do we hunt now? It's you know, in the genome, right? right? Across massive data sets. So you know, the Human Genome Project has about a petabyte of our stuff, runs on Co-Rate, right? It runs on Co-Rate. Yeah. Oh, nice. Nice. And, and we look at this, and they just they have so much coming in. Every time you do a, a sequencing run now, it's about a terabyte of data for one person. Wow, that, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm getting at, because you've got to do it per person. Yeah, and so to, to look forward into the future of personalized medicine or you know, this really deep dive, you know, specific research, yes. et cetera, yes. uh, you know, if you can handle and get your arms around you know, 10 petabytes of data to go crunch it, and if you can do it with the proper performance, with the proper tools to go do it, you can be 10 or 100 or 1,000 times more effective than people used to be with you know, you know, a little you know, sort of a dropper and a vial yeah, and yeah, you know, yeah. doing a small experiment, if you can leverage every experiment that's ever been run and then look at you know, 40 years of outcome data and then look down to the, you know, the base pairs, I mean, you know, all of a sudden you've got a microscope now. You can look into questions in a deeper way. So that, that's, you know, look, we're just plumbers. I, it, it's cool, right? I, I, we geek out. I, I love, you know, love all the plumbing, but, you know, it's the stuff that it helps do that, that is really the headline. So, uh, you know, in, in the case, I, that was probably a little bit overblown headline. But, uh, you know, the idea is, you know, can you use the new technologies in ways that have an impact? Well, let's, you know, a, a slight then. So healthcare is obviously one we're all mentioning, but let's just nail some other verticals again so our guests can go away and say what other verticals are or perhaps should be looking at harnessing and leveraging their big data. Is anyone, like, missing it? And you're thinking, ah, oh, when these guys wake up, you know, they're sitting on a fortune. Well, fine, we know financials uses it today. It's used quite a bit in fraud detection. You know, there was a piece very recently that talked about how J.P. Morgan is using it for fraud detection. Fraud detection, patents, analysis. And yeah, I mean, it's used in retail. I mean, there are a variety of industries that are doing all levels of analysis. Again, some of it's internal, some of it's external. I mean, there are companies that are very sensitive to what's being said about them um, in social networks and attempting ways to sort of harness and gather that information to understand what, what's going on. So, I mean, I think you can go across a number of industries. The, the, the challenge for each of them is to decide those data sets that are now going to give them the insight that they're looking for to drive their data forward. And I agree, and a lot of it is done, uh, not, not quite in the rearview mirror, but it's, you know, they're looking at kind of where were we a week ago 
you know, I think it is getting closer and closer to maybe near time, not real time, right? That's, that requires a lot, right, in terms of uh, infrastructure. Near time, agility. that's a real term? Near time. Near time. Yeah. I like that, near yeah. time. Well, the government is another one that, that, that is you know, certainly using this a lot. So the military intelligence groups, uh, they understand when you're fighting an they army and it's a bunch of tanks on the battlefield, that's one thing. But when you're looking for needles in the haystacks, uh, it's, you know, that's a big data problem. And so they are very far out in front. I, I had dinner with the CTO and the CIO of one of the intelligence agencies as me and the guy who runs the Google data centers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, the guy said, hey, uh, look, we've got a big pro data problem. I said, I imagine you do. Yeah. Right, and it, you know, it, but it, what it came down to is he said, we got plenty of money to go spend on you know, you know, complex old sand stuff. It's just that it's dead to us. We can't prosecute our mission with that stuff anymore. We need to look more like the Google guys here. And so everyone who's you know, starting to realize that, to, to, that their, you know, their mission is changing and needs a lot of data, uh, they're looking forward. And that's where the cloud really informs kind of this big data thing because you look at who deals with the biggest data, the Googles and Amazons and Facebooks, and where have they gone? They're not running old gear. They're not running old models. They're having to invent new things. And it looks like commodity scale out, massively parallel. You know, it just, it's a very different model for how you build stuff. Now, is, is just, there, go on. just to give some perspective, right, on what you just mentioned, uh, think about your Rovio or um, maybe Zynga, right, generating 100 billion events per day or 200 billion events per day. This is a gaming company. Any gaming company will be actually much bigger than any other big enterprise you can imagine today. So 50 billion, 100 billion events is, very, is the norm per day for all these guys. So that's big data, really. I would add, uh, similar to the gaming companies, one of the gaming companies runs Eucalyptus, and certainly a lot of data. But I would add retail to, to that vertical market as well, and if right. you look at Pepsi. But you are already using it, though, surely. Right. And, um, and you know, Amazon is a retail giant, and you could, you could say that, but Pepsi's of the world, uh, they are certainly looking at uh, big data and analytics on, on, on top of cloud models. Is there any danger, now we've encouraged all those businesses and, and you know, the CEOs are going to see this, aren't they? They're going to see it in Fortune, they're going to be reading it in business class, and they're going to go, oh my god, my big data strategy. Is there any possibility that the internet itself will collapse under zettabytes of data? Well, if you try and move it all over the internet, <laughs> yes, it will. <laughs> Uh, you know, so uh, there, there's a certain amount of, uh, you know, uh, one of the things that you will be talking to people, and they say, well, we want to transfer a petabyte of data from data center A to data center B, and they calculate it, it's going to take a year and a half, right? <laughs> and so, yes. so we, we, we will sometimes recommend trucknet. So we say never underestimate the, you know, bandwidth of a, you know, sort of a FedEx truck full of, you know, tapes, right, <laughs> or disk drives. Uh, it's high latency, yeah. but it's high throughput. So, uh, you know, th there are certain times when you have to think differently when the data gets so heavy, that you actually have to you know, bring the workload to the data, and suppose, as opposed to moving the data to the, the workload. And so that, that's, that's one of the interesting things about cloud computing is that uh, you, know, you, you need to think about not only where are you gonna put it, but you know, how are you coupling that with the, the application stacks and, and making sure that you can make that available to people. Another quick terminological one. I mean, big data sounds so sexy. Fast data, we had hot data, cold data, you said. Has anybody yet decided that They'll do a counterplay and small data. I don't know. It could be but small SMB big data. Or something. Small, well, no, just small data. Just <laughs> I'm going to go the other way right. and and sweep up the market of people who don't have big and look after them. Have you heard I, small I, data? I, I think there is a uh, sort of big data as a service or small data as a service opportunity for people who aren't going to have all of the wherewithal to set up this infrastructure. Uh, there's a, certainly a cloud opportunity for that, and I have friends that are looking at that for some different verticals right <laughs> now. I think there's definitely small data is everywhere right now. So I think people are doing, uh, you guys are familiar with data science, uh, which is kind of a new term. You, people are talking about big data, but along with it, there's data science that came along, right? Data scientists that everybody's hiring right now in every company. So main thing there is those guys operate with small data. Out of small data, sample data, they just have to make decisions. And that's how, that's how basically that world has been. Uh, all of a sudden, they have to also live in this big data world. They haven't really figured it out yet. So. Small data is happening, it is there, and it will continue to be there until we figure out how to make use of big data. In the meantime, we'll just store it. All right, we're going to leave our audience, as we always do, with something short, sharp, and shiny. So, now you have to earn your keep shiny. on this panel. You get uh, three words to send them off. We we're talking five years hence, so this is not necessarily big data. It's not necessarily cloud computing. I don't know. You may know something I don't know. Give them three words, please. Three things to look out for.
three things where this is all headed, or three, the three words might be of one thing, mm -hmm. but only three words, I'm afraid, starting with you, Max. <laughs> Can I phone a friend? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, let the audience decide. No. Three words. Three words, five years hence, people say, Max, you're so savvy. But the thing is, my homework is I only need three words. Where's it all headed, Max? OK, so word one would be real time. Hyphens count? Real time you can have as one. I, I, can, I can use that as one. Real time is okay, one over good. here. Um, real time. Performance. But they're separate. It's not real time performance. Real time. No, no it's separate. Performance, can I string right. them together? Real, no, no, that would be two words. Real time, performance, and Max, work with me here. Uh, efficient. I don't know. Those are my Real favorite. time, performance, efficient. That's where it's all headed. I, yeah, I, that's where I'm headed. OK. Govin. <laughs> mm, to me, it's a single location to store the data. Oh, hang on. Yeah, I, I don't know. Single. I think, was it hyphenated? No, okay. Single location. Put a hyphen in there. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh that's location. Uh, okay. Single, well, it was a single. Okay, we'll give it to you. A location, location, location. in you know, easier okay. to access, so, right? Yeah. Elasticity oh. to access the data. You know what? I. <laughs> <laughs> it was there. I couldn't. Yep. Yeah. I would steal a performance. Yeah. Yes. Performance is is one of the categories. Performance. Yes. You can have the same ones. That's fine. Christoph. Okay, so I have mic, so that's fine. That's true. <laughs> so um, I would say consumerization oh. of data and analytics, definitely. Uh, number two, I would say um, bigger data. That's two words right and, there. Oh, well, no, actually, it might not be. Bigger data. And different infrastructure. <laughs> that's another two words. <laughs> <laughs> Big, different consumer. Aye, 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 aye. Aye. Kevin. Work with me here, don't break the rules. Three right. words, you've got the whole audience, they're gonna go out, they might never come back unless you yeah. pick the right three words. Commoditization. Commoditization. Automation. Who? Automation. Oh, automa I thought you said abomination. <laughs> okay, automation. And self-service. Self-service. So we're gonna apply the usual Gielan-esque rule. You heard the three words? Who did the best three words? Was it Govind? Applaud, please, in the correct level for his three, or was it seven, or three words? Govind? <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> Max? I have that, cash, I have cash. That is sympathy <laughs> clapping because he found it. I know, so I know. It was, a hard, it was hard. Christos, you had to have to start. That was why I said it. Yes. Christos. Okay. Yes, I'm good. Uh, yeah. Veteran Kevin. He's not veteran at all. Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I can't tell. And does it even matter? Thank you so much, audience. <laughs> Thank you, panel. Thank you. We continue. I believe the show floor is still open. Is the show floor still open? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.